Okay, welcome everyone. This is uh, Dr. Edward Conrad, and this is uh, the fourth weekend of our vision event. And I'm very excited um, to have Howard Leonhardt, who's an amazing individual. I call him the Nikolai Tesla of microcurrent. He has done some amazing things. He's actually taking uh, the microcurrent technology and, and putting it into production and getting FDA approval. And I'm so grateful for him because he approached me, that must have been about five or six years ago, um, yeah, man. about taking some of my frequencies and uh, putting them uh, to market and getting FDA approval. He's an amazing researcher. And folks, you know, those of you that are using microcurrent, he's going to take uh, microcurrent to the next level. In fact, he inspired me to go back to school to get my master's in electrical engineering. That may have been a mistake, <laughs> but, uh, but Howard, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, and uh, thank you so much for taking time to join us. So no questions during his presentation, but write them down in the chat. And at the end of his presentation, we'll open it up for questions. Okay, take it away, Howard. Dr. Kondrat, uh, thank you for that kind uh, introduction and for this uh, opportunity. And it's great to, to be with you again. And uh, we're both missing the late Dr. Y. King Lu, who was uh, right there with us when we started this project. And uh, uh, even though uh, he's lost, he carries on to the work that you and I do together. And he's with us here today, but he's uh, with us in a different way. Uh, everybody, th thanks for taking time on this Saturday. Uh, I know you had many things you could have done other than uh, sitting here, and I, I hope uh, to pass on uh, some of what we've learned over the years. Uh, before we go into the presentation, just a little bit of background. Uh, we've been at this regeneration research for a long time. Uh, Leonhardt Ventures founded in 1982. In 1988, we uh, undertook our first organ regeneration procedure, working with Dr. Ray Scow and Dr. George McGovern in Pittsburgh. And in that case, we regenerated a heart in a dog using uh, muscle stem cells. Uh, in 1985, the book uh, Body Electric was published. And I think many of you uh, listening uh, know that book very well by Dr. Robert O. Becker. I, uh... I have the book uh, right here behind my desk. It's it's always uh, it's always with me. The uh, Dr. Robert Becker also has uh, passed away, and his uh, work continues on with us as well. I was so intrigued by this book. It took me about two years, but in 1987, I called Dr. Becker and said, I, "I totally believe in what you're doing and what you've taught the rest of us." And I would really love to collaborate in research with you. So we started to work together. And our first project was to work on limb regeneration or healing diabetic ulcers in legs and feet. And we went on to publish in the journal Circulation, the Journal of the American Heart Association, one of the very first papers. It was called Simple Method of Angiogenesis, Creating New Blood Vessels Using Bioelectric Signaling, Using Microcurrent. And this was a landmark publication at the time. And, and what that paper showed, it was an animal study. It showed when we use the right electrical signals, we created the right protein expressions to be able to grow blood vessels. And you could see uh, the untreated animals, their foot was falling off and bad, bad blood flow. And the treated animals had pink, pretty feet that were healthy. And when we did angiograms, you would see dramatically more blood flow in the microcurrent treated animals than those that were not. Well, we later learned that that work, like it is often, was not perfect. Those vessels that we created in our first try were leaky, and they didn't last, and they retreated over time. They were created by the expression of vascular endothelial growth factor. Later, working with the University of Florida and Cleveland Clinic, we got better at angiogenesis. In fact, we converted to what we would call arteriogenesis, being able to grow blood vessels that have true endothelium lining that do not leak and do not... Uh, retreat over time. Uh, in the year 1999 and 2000, we came across a giant discovery. We discovered the bioelectric signaling sequence for stem cell homing. Wherever we put those signals, you point the signals to your knee, you point the signals to your, your heart, you point the signals to your eye. Wherever we delivered these signals, a person's own stem cells would migrate from their bone marrow, their fat, and their circulating blood 
to the site. And that began a new era of our work, being able to control not only stem cell homing, but stem cell proliferation and differentiation. And uh, we've taken that work from that, that time uh, forward. We now have over 800 patent claims and our patent claims basically focus on what I talked about, controlled specific uh, expressions of, of regenerative proteins. We have we have a whole suite that basically is focused on growing new blood vessels and improving circulation and assuring blood vessels that are there are not leaking, which is a big problem with vision. We have another whole suite that focus on nerve regeneration, sonic hedgehog, IGF-1, BDNF, uh, that, that help to reestablish neuronal connections, reestablish nerve connections, regenerate nerve. And uh, we now have tried to put the best package of these together into uh, what we call iCell, a program for eye regeneration. And I'm about to share with you that we have two platforms, one which is based on bioelectric signaling protein expression, and it's just non-invasive, and uh, that would be applicable to a wider population, would be safer and easier to deliver. But for people who really have serious vision loss, we have our iCell 2, which includes biologics, where we take the other half of what we learned of over all these years how to maximize the delivery of stem cells, and not just stem cells alone, but stem cells supported by a, a high host of growth factors. So this group knows the problem, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. You know very well that uh, millions and millions of people worldwide are suffering a vision loss and are looking for a better alternative. Macular degeneration, you all on this uh, call know the devastating effects of uh, macular degeneration and its progression. What we're bringing as a solution is uh, for mild cases, a non-invasive bioelectric or microcurrent stimulation that's directed towards specific protein expressions. And then for people that have severe vision loss, the combination of microcurrent or bioelectric protein expressions with a delivery of biologics. It could be injections or it could be a micro pump that I'm about to show you that would slowly deliver this mix of biologics, proprietary mix of biologics uh, into a damaged eye or an eye that's not working well to try to regenerate uh, the eye and regenerate the function of vision. Again, uh, I think I've touched on how it works already, but basically we have 800 patent claims related to specific protein expression. So when you have a specific frequency, a specific pulse width, a specific pulse duration, a specific amplitude, and delivered in a specific way, uh, you're able to control specific protein expressions. And each protein expression has a maybe different purpose to it. Uh, some are for nerve regeneration, some are for growing mature blood vessels, some are for just plain regenerating whatever tissue is, is damaged, such as you know, the miracle stem cells is if you recruit them to an eye, they turn into eye tissue. You recruit them to a heart, they turn into heart tissue. You recruit them to a knee, they turn into cartilage. The miracle of recruiting stem cells is you don't have to do all the work because the microenvironment helps tell the stem cells what they need to do, where they need to do it. So this is kind of a, a look at uh, how the technology looks today. On the uh, my far left, uh, your far right, I guess, uh, is our benchtop stimulator. We have FDA 510K market clearance for this. The market clearance is for improving circulation mm -hmm and pain relief. Uh, we also are, have uh, portable stimulators just for the convenience if this would be an at-home use product. Right now, we haven't made it available for at-home use for safety reasons. We've done all of the studies I'm about to show you in clinic with uh, under physician supervision. But in the future, we believe that we're gonna have a product that's gonna be so safe, so well proven that people can order it on Instagram have it shipped to their house, open up a box, put on some goggles and hit a button that is able to have uh, uh, deliver the signals necessary for vision recovery. The one on the bottom uh, here that has the pink and white cover, I'm about to visit that factory, which is in Brazil. Uh, and uh, uh, it's a wonderful team, 425 employees right now. They just bought the land next to them and are putting up a new building. They have a forecast to be to 2000 employees by, uh, 2024, uh, and, it, and they've turned out to be an excellent manufacturing partner. So they make these for us under our private label. Uh, three brothers uh, founded the company in 2007. They hit over 220 million in sales last year, sold over 122,000 stimulators 
just in the market of Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay, just those markets that are often ignored by US companies, they sold 220 million. And the reason they sold so many is that uh, the product works. Now, they didn't sell it all for vision recovery. They sold um, their simulators for skin regeneration, hair regeneration, physical therapy recovery, bladder recovery. Uh, but they also, working with us, have uh, introduced a vision recovery platform. Now, what we do is, is program into that stimulator that they make for us. And they make it for us with a very specific uh, signal, uh, uh, circuit board design that's able to do the things we need to do with our software, which is the program that tells the body to release the right proteins for regeneration. Uh, the, the large bent stop stimulator on my left, uh, that's made in Anaheim, California by Metler Electronics. They've been in business since 1957, and uh, they're also a great partner. So we have three suppliers of stimulators, and they become unique when we program in our proprietary signals. Now, uh, we have a variety of eye goggles that we've been trying out, and we haven't uh, finalized what eye goggle. Uh, in some studies, we blacken out the, uh, the part where you see during the stimulation. In other cases, we've allowed the, the person to see through the goggles. We haven't determined if it's better to block the vision during the simulation or keep it open. This is all being gathered. Uh, and we're, we're also doing different experiments, uh, trying to determine the exact right location of the electrodes. And we haven't finished that research, but you can see some of the, the type of goggles that we've experimented with. This very next one, uh, we've built uh, 20 of these goggles in our own shop that we plan to use in uh, up, upcoming studies. And, you know, uh, they, they look rather crude because they're built in a prototype lab. Uh, our thinking is uh, make sure that they work, prove that they work, and we can make them uh, more pr pretty later. The second part of our technology is iCell plus biologics. And to you know, give you a little history, uh, I mentioned earlier that we injected muscle stem cells to repair a, a damaged heart in 1988. We were the first in the world to inject muscle stem cells to repair a human heart without surgery in 2001 in the Netherlands. And we took that product into a pilot study, a phase one study, a phase two study, and a phase two double-blinded randomized placebo-controlled study at multiple centers in the US. And uh, we proved out uh, the ability to regenerate that organ uh, using muscle stem cells. But while we were doing that in parallel, our team in the R&D lab was working on better and better ways, improvements to increase the survival of the cells, to increase their engraftment and their functionality, and to just overall provide better results. And uh, in that work, we found that if we combine bioelectric stimulation, especially the right bioelectric stimulation, with the right mix of biologics, we would get much better results than just putting in stem cells okay. alone. And we also found out that if you came back and delivered stem cells, not just one time, but many times, you would get much better results than just delivering stem cells once. So for all of our programs, including the eye, our preferred mode right now is to have a pump. And we refill that pump daily with stem cells and support factors. And some of these support factors that we've discovered in, in our research that are highly supportive of increasing the chance of stem cells to do what they need to do to regenerate that organ. And again, you know, stem cells are miraculous. You put them in an eye and they become eye tissue. You put them in a heart and they become heart, heart tissue. We found that they do a much better job kind of following nature. You know, there's a reason that eggs have an egg yolk. That egg yolk is full of nutrients that, 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 that the developing embryo needs to be able to become a, a functional um, chicken or, or uh, anything else that uh, other, any other animal that comes from an egg. And basically what we've designed is an egg yolk that goes with the stem cells to support them, provide nutrients necessary for them to do a better job of regenerating the organ. Now, uh, we have a very uh, special proprietary mix that we've developed over time. And I can tell you some of the components and some of the components we kind of keep a uh, secret to uh, keep it very proprietary to us. But some of those components include, we use secretome that's derived from amniotic membrane. So this is uh, amniotic fluid, basically. And uh, there's something miraculous about the fluid that comes in the birthing process. It's basically a miracle grow. It's a special fluid full of 240 different uh, regenerative growth factors that contribute to 
establishing human life and, and, and allowing cells to do what they need to do. And we found that when we deliver that secretron from amniotic membrane sourcing, secretron is a, is a word for secretion from, uh, that we get much better results with the stem cells than if we just inject the stem cells alone. We also have, uh, we use uh, selected exosomes. And exosomes are vesicles that uh, are a full pack, packed full of nutrients and, and factors that help uh, tissue regeneration. Alexa, we also use platelet-rich fibrin. Oh. And platelet-rich fibrin is, uh, you probably heard of platelet-rich plasma. And uh, platelet-rich fibrin is very similar, but it is a more of a gelatin form. And we bioelectrically pretreat platelet-rich fibrin. We have a patent for that to be able to uh, enhance, amplify, and extend regenerative protein expressions from platelet-rich fibrin. So what we do for, if you're a, uh, an eye doctor, we would provide a centrifuge to your lab. You would take a blood sample from your patient, put it into the bio PRF centrifuge that's made for us by the Myron lab in Miami. And uh, Dr. Richard Myron and myself and Dr. Valerie Kantner, we have a patent together for bioelectrically treating PRF to enhance desirable regenerative proteins. You would put the blood sample in the centrifuge, hit a button and within three minutes, you get a vial full of a gelatin that's chock full of nutrients. And uh, we have found that anywhere we inject this chock full of nutrients, uh, platelet rich fibrin, especially that that has been well, like treated, it is able to uh, help with the regeneration process. Uh, those are just three of the components. I'm not gonna talk about the, the, the rest, but you get the idea that we basically create an egg yolk full of nutrients that have been proven that help establish tissue regeneration, stem cell survival and engraftment. And we refill that in a pump every day and we program that pump to slowly infuse this regenerative mix into the organ, in this case, the eye. Now we're not making these pumps. So you can see on this labeling here, uh, this particular pump is coming from a company called Replenish, which is based in Los Angeles. Uh, some of our friends uh, knew the founders that came out of United, U University of Southern California, and we're just buying the pump from them and putting our proprietary mixture in, and, and we are buying the stimulators from suppliers and programming our proprietary uh, signals in those stimulators. So we're not making the stimulators, we're not making the pumps, and we really don't want to be making the goggles. <laughs> We've made the goggles so far, but going forward, we want to hire somebody to make the goggles uh, for us. We actually have two suppliers for the pumps. Uh, one is uh, Fluid Synchrony in Pasadena, and the other is Replenish in, in Los Angeles. And actually, they have some common uh, founding members. They just split into two groups. I think you know well the competition for some of the work that we're doing. It includes uh, laser therapy, includes medications. I'm not going to talk a lot about, about the, the competition, but we think that what we're doing is going to more completely regenerate the eye and regenerate vision, and we're going to have to prove that over, over time. Uh, I mentioned about the stem cell homing. I mentioned about the regenerative proteins. There's a very special protein called Clotho. Uh, and if you haven't heard of Clotho before, K-L-O-T-H-O. Type Clotho and anything in Google, such as Clotho and inflammation, Clotho cancer, Clotho vision, Clotho regeneration, Clotho calcification, Clotho, Clotho even addiction uh, uh, and... Uh, uh, alcoholism. So there's something about Clotho that if you run low on Clotho, it's a it's a, a protein associated with aging. And people that get their Clotho levels to be lower earlier, they prematurely age. And unfortunately for them, every ailment that comes with premature aging comes to them. It comes to them more quickly. And that includes vision loss. And uh, we have technology that we've patented that elevates your clotho level. We have a body suit. It looks like a wetsuit or a yoga suit full of electrodes. You put it on with a portable stimulator the size of a cell phone, and we can elevate your clotho level 150% to 2,300%. If you go to aerobic exercise for hours three times a week and eat absolutely healthy food and sleep eight hours a day and manage your stress, you increase your clotho level about 12% doing that. With our bioelectric simulation technology, we can get you up 150% in very short order. We recommend to do all the rest of the things, eat well, sleep well, manage your stress, 
and get exercise, but doing that complemented with our Cloto enhancement technology can um, put you in a better position. Now we do have a Cloto test available, clotoyears.com. If you're interested to be tested for your Cloto level, what we tell you with that blood test is where you stand with your peers. You're supposed to have a certain Cloto level at age 60 and you're either gonna be at that, below that, or maybe if you're lucky, uh, above that. Uh, again, uh, Cloto is associated with almost everything related to aging. The American Association of Retired People put out in their newsletter last July, citing a Nature Medicine article that said the number one marker for early onset dementia and Alzheimer's is low level of Cloto and low level of BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor. Uh, we actually have patented signals for elevating both BDNF and Cloto. Now, there's not a lot of data establishing the link between Cloto and vision loss. We're participating in that, we're doing that research. But we believe that research is going to clearly show that if you're low on Cloto, just like every other aging-related element, ailment, you're, you're going to be you're going to be losing your vision more quickly. And we have technology to elevate that. The other thing we haven't talked about is inflammation. One of our patented signals is custom man, custom custom management of. Uh, my daughter's in the back. <laughs> custom management of, uh, of inflammation. We read the inflammation and deliver customized signals to modulate the inflammation based on that read. We, we have the first and only world patent uh, for that. And I, I already mentioned uh, stopping leaky vessels. I'm not going to talk about the market size. Uh, you, you know how large the markets are. And, and most of your people are physicians and clinicians, not uh, business people. But uh, we all know that it's a very large market. We've created an all-star team that includes Dr. Leslie Miller of Tampa, Florida. He was for 10 years chairman of cardiovascular medicine at the University of Minnesota. Dr. Jorge Genovese, he was previously a leader of regenerative medicine research at the McGowan Regenerative Medicine Institute in Pittsburgh. Uh, he was also head of the regeneration programs at the University of Utah. We have Dr. Patrick Johnson, Johnson as our chief ophthalmology uh, officer. And I'm gonna tell you more about Dr. Lori Shaken and her work in a, in a few moments. Lori did her own microcurrent study separate from us. We saw the work, we were so excited about it. We asked her to join our team and, and she did. So we're about to show you some of the data from Dr. Shaken that I just mentioned, some of our protein expression data and data from Dr. Kondra. Now, uh, you know, slides like this and a meeting like this are kind of hard to file, but Dr. Shaken uh, published a 17 patient study and uh, with uh, over 25 eyes treated with microcurrent therapy. Some of you probably have already seen this uh, published data. It came out in, in 2015. There were significant increases seen in visual acuity in dry macular degeneration. And twice as many patients showed increase in visual acuity compared to those that had the deterioration. And then surprisingly, five of six or 83% of the wet macular degeneration patients showed an increase in visual acuity, vis in improvement in vision, and none of the microcurrent treated patients show deterioration. This is some of the data from that study. I am uh, not going to go slow on this, so forgive me. And if you want to uh, receive the data slides, just uh, send us an email and we'll, we'll send it to you. Okay. This is a summary of, uh, of uh, Dr. Kondrat's work over, over 2011, 12, 152 patients, 290 treated eyes. You may not have seen it before in a, a summary uh, graph form like this, but uh, 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 it, only 8% of the patients had no change. 23%, one to four lines or better. 54%, uh, uh, five letters or better. And 15%, uh, 10 letters or better. Uh, so basically, 92% benefited from microcurrent therapy and only 8% did not change. And those people that did not change did not necessarily deteriorate. So you could possibly say 100% success. And uh, of course, Dr. Kondra uh, can uh, answer any questions you may have on his own data that we uh, really encourage us to continue our research. This is his data on uh, contrast improvement, which is also impressive. And I'm sorry for rushing through these slides, but uh, we can have another time uh, to go in more detail. So uh, for ISO, we're, we're 
we're about to launch a new clinical trial with uh, Dr. Shaken Signals with improved goggles. We're about to, we're doing animal studies in parallel to to document the safety lab and animal studies of the new signals that we have as candidate signals for iCell2, and we're continuing to work on iCell plus biologics. We're moving rather slow because we put safety first. So we absolutely want to make sure uh, that we're not going to hurt anybody with this work going forward. So we are doing uh, many, many animal studies, many, many mm -hmm. lab studies before we move anything new into clinical trials. So okay. again, uh, we've completed uh, with Dr. Shaken. Dr. Shaken completed it and joined with us uh, a 20 patient trial with, in collaboration with other researchers, such as Dr. Kondrat, uh, well over 100 registry patients. Uh, we have built and tested many uh, uh, non invasive goggle prototypes, and we're, we're learning where to place the electrodes and refining that. And we've developed a, a handheld portable stimulator. One thing I want to mention about the handheld uh, portable stimulator is that uh, it has connectivity with the phone app and it has connectivity with the chief medical officer. So if somebody is not following the protocol, it says, it sa let's say the protocol says one hour of stimulation every other day for four weeks and somebody is stimulating for three hours, we can uh, shut, shut them out of the protocol or we can uh, program the device so it will only follow the protocol and won't, won't go outside of the protocol. In discussions with the FDA, this is particularly important. If this is ever going to be an at-home use product, it has to be programmed to only do what it's supposed to do in the duration it's supposed to do it and not allow anybody to overdose themselves. So in our dialogue with the FDA, we're sharing with them this very, very secure software that ensures uh, patient safety. Uh, here's where we're at right now. We're about to file an IRB to complete a new round of studies, basically repeating the shaken study. This has already been demonstrated to be safe. Uh, you saw it was 20, 20 patients. Uh, we just want to expand that work, improve again with a new study uh, that uh, that technology works. In parallel, we have a bunch of new signals we're, we're trying, Sonic Hedgehog, BDNF, uh, and uh, the right dosing of the SDF1 and PDGF signals. And we're doing this in animals and in the lab, and we're establishing safety. And once we are really comfortable with the safety of these new signals that were not used in the previous shaken study, we will move to a pilot low dose study. We will introduce this technology in very low doses to patients, uh, lower than when we expect to be the efficacy dose, but we'll be focusing that first study on safety. Once we establish that we don't hurt anybody with these new signals, then we'll gradually increase the dosing. In, in, in our world of microcurrent, dosing means time duration, and it could mean intensity of the signals. We'll gradually increase them in, in each stage, establishing safety as we, we go up in incremental changes. As an example, when we did our first FTA cleared study for the stem cell repair for the heart that I mentioned earlier, which is published uh, phase one study, published uh, pilot study, published phase two study, published phase two, three study, uh, along the way, we started with 25 million cells, then we went to 125 million cells, then we went to 250 million cells, then we went to 400 million cells, then we went to 800 million cells. So we gradually increased the dosing. And by the way, it turned out that 400 million cells was the ideal dose. And in the animal studies, 800 million cells was the ideal dose. And it was kind of surprising to us that in humans, a slightly lower dose did better than the higher dose. Well, in the animals, it was a linear progression. The more cells we put in, the more organ regeneration that we got. Uh, when we got to the humans, it was kind of uh, the, the factor of uh, too many deer in the forest. And we delivered too many cells in an environment where there was a limited amount of nutrients and blood supply. It started to get worse results because they were all fighting for a limited amount of nutrients and blood supply. You know, this, these are all things we learn in research, and this is research. And in no way am I claiming that we have absolutely proven without doubt that this is safe, that we've absolutely proven without doubt that this absolutely works and it works perfectly. What we're sharing with everybody is we are doing research that seems to be worthy of doing. We're taking a cautious path. We're uh, doing it in incremental steps, but we have high hope that this is going to work. And we have used the same approach with other organs and have had spectacular success. Uh, I mentioned before, 800 uh, patent claims. 
I didn't mention that over 600,000 patients have been treated with Leonhardt in inventions so far, many of them related to organ regeneration recovery. And uh, we've had uh, you know, amazing success in certain sectors. Uh, erectile dysfunction being one. Yeah, you probably never thought you would hear about erectile dysfunction study, but we just completed a 115 patient study and, we, and with just modern bioelectric stimulation alone, we were able to demonstrate 89% of the patients were basically cured of their erectile dysfunction. That also means that we failed 11% of the time. So, so following what we plan to do with iCell, uh, we were able to achieve success with non-invasive bioelectric stimulation of multiple signals directed at regeneration of that organ and succeeded, we succeeded better than our target. Our target was to have 60% of the patients have a full recovery and we achieved 89%. But now with the 11% that we failed, we're gonna come back with that product's called ErectiStim, ErectiStim plus biologics. Now we're gonna inject the same mixture, stem cells, exosomes, secretome, in that particular organ. And we're going to see if we can go to 100% success. Uh, this is the plan for iCell. Start with non-invasive, see how well we can do with non-invasive and only revert to the more risky and more complicated and more costly biologics where we cannot succeed with non-invasive uh, stimulation alone. And you can see the timeline here. I mean, uh, for some of these folks, it's testing their patients, but basically we, we don't think we're gonna have data on the ISOP plus biologics to share with you until the third quarter of 2024. And at that time, we wanna find a strategic partner, a large company, that would partner with us to go to larger scale clinical trials and to commercialization. Uh, that, that's all I have for us today. Okay, um, Howard, I think there are some uh, questions in the chat. And somebody's uh, making some noise. If, if yeah, anybody's uh, Howard, not talking- you, you can click a, uh, you can click uh, mute all. If you, if you click on participants, I it can be it. mute yes. all. Okay, yes. You might want to try that. But yeah, there's been a lot of background noise. So I think every you, you can unmute yourself if you want to speak. Yeah. And thanks so everybody. If you want to look, a great presentation and, and thank you so much for taking time. You're doing amazing work. And I appreciate everything you're doing because you know my passion is using uh, microcurrent and alternative therapies to restore lost vision. And uh, I was unsuccessful in, in moving the needle, but with your company and your team, I think we're going to see um, see progress and it can benefit millions of millions of people that are suffering from vision loss. Um, you want to check the chat? There were some questions. Oh, thanks, everybody. So a question from uh, Victoria, once the function is improved through microcurrent, how long does it last? How sustainable are the new connections? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So again, unfortunately, we do not have uh, a lot of data on microcurrent from the eye from our technology. Uh, I understand from Dr. Shaken that she checked back with her patients, at least by telephone, a year after their treatment, and they felt that they were maintaining their improvement. The same thing with the, our erectile dysfunction treatment. Uh, we definitely formally checked on everybody six months after they received their four-week treatment, and all of them at six months still had maintained their improvement. And now we are checking uh, one year, and we've reached about half of the uh, 105 patients, and uh, uh, the half that we've reached, uh, all but one has said that they've maintained the full improvement that they had at four weeks at, at one year out. So uh, we don't have the perfect answer to that question, but we have some positive indicators that it lasts. May I, may I, if you may, me, if you may, if I may speak. So do we have to continue um, using microcurrent and all uh, like symphonic light, all that from time to time to maintain, or it will be maintained that like automatically by itself? Thank you. Great, great question. Uh, all of these th questions, I, I don't want to ever you know, claim I have the definitive absolute answer that is a perfect answer. Uh, this is research and we're you know, just learning as we go along. Uh, uh, Howard, and trying to be safe uh, while, I could, while we uh, do it. 
Howard, oh. uh, my, my clinical observation is that these therapies are anti-aging. We're not stopping the aging process. So it depends what other things you do, good nutrition, detoxification, et cetera. So many people will have a couple microcurrent therapies uh, and, and do well for a long time. Others, uh, because of underlying factors, would have to repeat it frequently. We, we can't stop the aging process. We can slow it. And, and don't, don't forget the explanation on Clotho. So we think we can uh, at least slow down the aging process with the, with the Clotho stimulation. And, and I know that that's a bold statement, but there is data out there that shows Clotho deficient mice die 30% younger. Clotho supplemented mice live 30% uh, longer. And I'm not claiming we're gonna have every human live 30% longer, but it, it really is miraculous that this work with Clotho and we can't wait to share it with you and we believe one of the main contributions that iCell is going to provide to the field is linking uh, getting Clotho at least to normal levels and perhaps elevated above normal levels is going to slow down uh, vision loss and possibly reverse vision loss. But uh, we don't have that data to absolutely say that today. But my prediction is that we are going to be able to share that data with you that shows just that uh, within about 24 months. Question on um, the recording results and, and tracking. Are you using radiographs or like ultrasound or some kind of, you know, convenient technology to see the nerve regeneration and, and perfusion of tissue? In the, uh, in the eyes, we were not able to do the uh, histopathology yet. So, you know, uh, what we do in the animals is we create uh, infarctions in, uh, in a sense or d d damage uh, and uh, both nerve damage and blood vessel damage, and we have control animals, and then we have treated animals, and we can create the injury in the same way. And then when we do the treatment afterwards, we dissect the animals and we look, uh, you know, how has the blood vessel network been recreated? Has the nerve corrections been recorrect? And we compare the ones where we didn't treat with the ones that we treat. And generally the ones that we didn't treat their blood vessels are all messed up. Uh, they have scar tissue in the organ and the nerves are, are all messed up. And when the animals that we treat, we see better nerve connection and ner uh, nervous network uh, and, and we see uh, better blood supply. Now in the, in the humans, of course, while they're alive, we can't do the histopathology. So we have to use uh, surrogate markers. Uh, and Dr. Kondra, you might wanna talk about uh, uh, you know, how we assess uh, w whether uh, people have got uh, better uh, nerve connections in their eye uh, after we do this treatment? Well, there's something called um, ocular coherence tomography, which is kind of like uh, an x-ray that uses light where we look at the cross-section of the eye. So we're able to determine if there's any regeneration in the optic nerve and retinal tissue. So there have been some observations that there is regeneration in, in those areas. We're also using electrophysiology, which measures the function of the um, retina and the optic nerve. And we are seeing positive results using uh, both of those modalities. Dr. Wilcox, are you, uh, are you online? I think he uh, was able to get the connection. Dr. Wilcox is helping with the upcoming uh, upcoming study, and he's designed a very uh, sophisticated way that you ophthalmologists would understand better to uh, assess the uh, functional improvement. And I can send it to anybody that uh, is interested to, to see it. I do have some other uh, chat questions, but before I move to more chat questions, are there any uh, more verbal questions? Uh, a very, very quick question. When you are um, implanting stem, stem cells, is there a risk of uncontrollable growth of those cells, which may cause a more serious problem? That was a big worry when we first began this work in 1988. And, uh, but now uh, through uh, thousands of humans and uh, uh, many thousands of animals, uh, that, that worry uh, isn't there, especially with adult stem cells. Now, if you use embryonic stem cells, a few people have reported uh, runaway proliferation, uncontrolled proliferation of embryonic stem cells.
but we're using uh, adult stem cells. And for the most part, autologous stem cells that are derived either from your own fat, your own bone marrow, your own blood, uh, uh, or own muscle. Uh, so that hasn't become an issue, but we're very worried in the eye about overpressurizing the eye. So you may have heard that, uh, that uh, there were uh, in a stem cell study that actually was done by my former company. They did it 10 years after I left, uh, but they had uh, a blindness in, in three patients and it caused uh, quite an uproar. Now I'm you know, privy to the investigation of that and uh, 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 the, uh, that what company was a U.S. stem cell out of Florida. Uh, I had founded BioHeart and U.S. stem cell acquired BioHeart, and uh, I resigned as CEO of 2007, and this occurred in in 2015, I think, uh, 16, uh, many years after I left. When I was there, we didn't have that program, uh, but the investigation showed that the the problem was uh, uh, too much pressure in the eye and too short of a time period. So the operator put too much liquid. It didn't matter. It didn't have anything to do with stem cells. It could have been water, but they injected too much too quickly and it, and it caused uh, overpressurization of the eye. So now we know, for instance, with these micro pumps, one of the reasons we like the micro pumps is it takes away operator variability. You put you, the doctor puts the, uh, the stem cells into the pump and the support factors and the pump very precisely, slowly, with low pressure, delivers the uh, payload or the stem cells into the eye. And we think the FDA is going to like that because it redu you know, really what happened there is that somebody just pushed that syringe too fast and that had too much, too much pressure. And the FDA has talked to us about that, that uh, you know, anything we can do to reduce <laughs> operator variability to increase safety, this is going to be something desired. Really good question. Thank you very much. We appreciate Dr. Uh, Conrad. We love you and we are very grateful to you and all of the presenters. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Have some of these oh. other questions that are on the chat. There's actually uh, 13 questions here in the chat box. So the next uh, question from Constance Mesa, M Mason is, uh, how long will it take insurance companies to come aboard and what financing opportunities there might be available for both patients and doctors? Uh, you know, we've been at this a lot of years uh, and we basically find if you develop a technology that really works well and particularly works, uh, is safer and more effective, than other alternatives, <laughs> uh, all the money side ends up working out one way or the other. And we have uh, two products that we develop that now have over a billion dollars in revenues and have all the insurance companies paying for it and have multiple financing opportunities for the patients and physicians who want to acquire those technologies. And uh, that came about because we were able to prove through well-designed clinical trials that this new technology was safer uh, and ultimately uh, more cost effective than other alternatives. Uh, but it, it never is an easy process. And Medicare or CMS is the body that you know, determines the reimbursement. And uh, we've been in front of Medicare and basically you know, they're doing their job. They want you to prove the economic benefit of the product and, and uh, economic benefit, societal benefit. And uh, they will give you a reimbursement that's uh, you know, uh, in line and, and sometimes they do that very good and sometimes uh, at least the companies are disappointed that they they provide too low of a reimbursement but right now there is not a reimbursement for uh, biologics repair of the eye or a microcurrent so right now if it would be all a private private payer and i'm sorry about that now, private financing for the devices, we, we could help with that. So if a doctor wanted to buy a stimulator, uh, we're happy to line up with a, a financing house that would allow that be, to be paid for in, in payments. Okay, thank you. So Lydia asked me to, uh, to repeat the, the place where you could get the Cloto test and it's clotoyears.com. So K-L-O-T-H-O years, 
y e a r s dot com, and we we really believe your clotho age more accurately reflects your real age than your chronological age. And I just turned sixty, so I'm kind of、uh, glad that I'm now going to go by my clotho age and not, and not by my calendar age, because that that sixty is a big number. Uh, the the uh, uh, But I, I encourage everybody to get the test. Now we're not making the test; we're using an FDA certified test. What we're doing is kind of crowdsourcing a bunch of orders together. It turns out、uh, anybody can buy this test. There's three FDA cleared providers, and it costs five hundred fifty dollars to buy the test kit. Well, it turns out you can do forty eight patients with each test kit. So we're, we've got twenty orders right now, and we're processing those. And obviously, you do the math: five hundred fifty divided by twenty. It brings the cost down to、uh, under a hundred dollars per test, and、uh, so and and we have a, a great laboratory in San Diego that's actually running the test、uh, for us. So the the way that it works is you you hit the order button on Clotho Years for one hundred ninety nine dollars, and we arrange for somebody to come out to your house and and take a blood sample. They put it in a little styrofoam box with some ice. They ship it to San Diego overnight. They take that out. They test your blood, and they send you. We send you back the results in a in a, a password protected format where no one else can see it. And all that that result will tell you is where you stand. That you're 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 twenty percent lower than your uh, age uh, peer group, or or you're right at your age peer group, or you're above your peer age group.、Uh, and, and then、uh, in addition to getting the test, we provide information. So if you're willing to Fill out a survey that says, you know, what what is your greatest interest? Clotho is tied to hair loss. Clotho is tied to if you're low in clotho and you go in the sun, you're much higher chance of having damage to your skin than if you're at normal or higher levels of clotho. If you're low in clotho, 10x higher chance to be an addict or an alcoholic. It's just remarkable. If you're low in clotho, your memory and cognitive function will be less than if you're normal or higher. So there's a lot of good reasons to to take the test, and you kind of if. if You know what we feel bad about is some people that come in low, you know, start to get depressed about it. In fact, clotho is tied to depression. If you're low in clotho, much higher chance to be to have depression, and anxiety, and、uh, you know the best way to get it up is to、uh, exercise, eat well, sleep well, and manage your stress. That's the natural way to get your clotho well level up, and and we encourage everybody to use that natural method. But some people just are genetically, you know, have bad luck that they don't have the genes that. Properly express the clotho, and and we can particularly help those people. And the, the, by the way, the website for the suit that elevates your clotho is called bodstim.com. B O D S T I M dot com. We have、uh, two FDA clearances for that suit. One is for muscle enhancement. So if basically if you're going to work out at the gym for 40 minutes, it's the same as working out without the suit for two, three, four hours. So it's designed to.、Uh, Help、uh, increase muscle、uh, building, and then the second indication、uh, through Metler is、uh, for muscle atrophy. So,、uh, particularly, we're we're doing a study with heart failure patients. They've been in bed in the hospital for 30 days. They get out of the hospital. We're sending them home with the suit so that they can get their muscles back because they, their muscles have deteriorated while they've been in bed in the hospital for a long time. Yeah. Now that is not FDA cleared for increasing your clotho. And making you younger, is FDA cleared for、uh, bringing your muscles back? I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, Charlene. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Thank you so much. Y'all are just so fabulous. I have no words. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Those are the words. And gratitude and appreciation tremendously for what you're doing.、Um, it's like there are so many amazing things that are happening. And with your product, I have two questions: the eye pump. Where does that go? Well, the replenish folks have done a number of studies、uh, in in animals and humans where they they, they place it right on the eye. So in, in that slide, that's a picture of it going right on the eye. So this is not for、uh, a low level、uh, clinic. This has to be done by、uh, an eye surgeon that has very good hands and delicately can. Place it there, and we realize that that's not for everybody. And, and like with erectile dysfunction, 89% of the people were just fine with the non-invasive stimulation, which was just really simple electrodes that they could do at home, and、mm -hmm. and 11% failed. 
So we plan to only use this pump and biologics for the people that have tried everything else that is less dangerous and less complicated. And this is kind of their last hope to get their vision back. And this would have to be done by a place by an eye surgeon. But once it's placed, refilling it is something that could be done by, uh, by an ophthalmologist. Uh, it would just be puncturing the silicon septum on a, on a regular basis to refill the chamber with whatever we're putting in there. Okay. And sorry, the second question. Oh, where the clinical trials that you're doing, where will those take place? We've lined, we've lined up, uh, uh, I think, uh, five centers in the US, uh, including Dr. Kondrat's uh, site. And, uh, uh, and then we plan to expand from there. So Dr. Shaken's trial was done in San Diego, Oakland, and Hawaii. Uh, and we plan to go back to those same centers for the new study. And then we're adding a, a few other centers. And, and like we typically do with the heart regeneration, we started with one site, <laughs> three sites, then we went to 15 sites, then we went to 33 sites. Uh, and, uh, you know, we gradually increase the number of sites and eventually, you know, just about everybody in the United States can get to a site within, uh, within a couple hours, especially with an airplane. And the doctor that you mentioned her studies in San Diego, Dr. Lori Shaken is based in, uh, uh, in Oakland. Uh, she actually has a farm in Lake Shasta and she's partly retired right now, but her practice is in uh, Oakland, California, and she linked up with friends of hers that were doctors in San Diego and Hawaii that joined the, the study. But most of the patients were enrolled in either Oakland or Berkeley, California, but basically uh, close to UC uh, Berkeley. Okay, and the lab you mentioned for the blood test, that's in San Diego? Um, yeah, I'm that's here. in San Diego. Great, you, you're where in San can Diego? I go? <laughs> yes, oh. that's where I am. Wow, well, you would be the easiest patient we've had yet. So <laughs> it's at the California Medical Innovations Institute, which is in Sorrento Valley. Uh, just I'm, in from I'm, Del Mar Beach. Right. I'm I'm two miles from there. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay. Charlene, when you go, I'll come down. I live okay. in uh, Ledera Ranch, only 45 minutes north of that. And I go two or three times a week because right now we're doing uh, organ regeneration studies there with the pump and with the stimulator. Uh, so they have a, it's a wonderful facility. It used to be the Scripps Research Institute. And my friend, Dr. Ghassan al kassab bought it from Scripps. And, and uh uh, the blood tests are done across the street and the animal studies are done on the other side of the street. And we, we, we have operations going on both sides. And it, it, it really is an extension of our company. I, I'm, we're there so much that it, it's almost like our second headquarters. Well, you, we'll, we'll connect privately and exchange numbers and then we can um, make in a time. Oh, hello, little one. <laughs> this um, is Connie. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Sorry to take personal time from everybody else, but it's exciting when there's somebody in my neighborhood because I'm very, I'm over the top with what I've received from my eye care at UCSD. Oh, and UCSD is amazing. And uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the uh, well, I look forward to meet you, Charlene. Let's coordinate a date. And uh, when we meet together, I could spend more time to go over some of the data that. Uh, uh, Dr. Kondrat asked me not to go into super detail today. And you know, sure. it actually takes a couple of hours to go through all of that. We have uh, multiple animal studies to, to refer to, uh, hundreds of lab studies, uh, but you know, this wasn't the forum to go over every one of those data graphs. It would have uh, put everybody to sleep maybe. <laughs> and also those who live in Los Angeles were pretty close to San Diego, but how can we connect for the test? Is there a way to call or what? Yeah, on Cloto years, once you put the order in, uh, Micah from our company will contact you to arrange your blood sample. And we can either send somebody to your house or you can go to a center where they'll draw your blood. You know, some people don't want anyone coming to their house for privacy. I'm just, I'm just asking what's the first step? Do we go through the website or the... the yeah, on, uh, on clotoyears.com, there's a, 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 a button that says order. And, oh, and, and okay. hit, the, hit the one that says 199 and, and type, in, uh, type in the word special discount. So I, I will give you whatever the maximum discount. I forgot what it is right now. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's 20%, but I, I, I don't remember. Daddy, Daddy, uh, what's up on all these places going to be here? Three o'clock. <laughs> no, two o'clock. 
Oh, two o'clock. You're right. Well, I don't want to keep you any longer, Howard. I appreciate, you know, the time that you spent. Um, and uh, those of you that have additional questions, you could either email my office at info at healing the eye, and I can communicate with Howard, or do you want to give them contact information? Yes, my, my best contact is my email, uh, Howard at leonhartventures.com, L-E-O-N-H-A-R-D-T uh, ventures.com. And what, what, uh, a number of the other questions really related to, do, do you expect this to help with glaucoma and do you expect it to help with uh, cataracts? And the short answer is yes. In the long run, we plan to do studies for all of these uh, vision related ailments. Uh, we particularly believe that we can regrow the, the cataracts with some of the work that we're doing. And you know, uh, others in, that, that have uh, done research in this area that you know, encourage that the combination of bioelectrics and biologics uh, can really work for those, uh, those applications. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Howard. Uh, great having you being part of the Vision Event 2022 and all of you participants uh, that have taken the time to join us. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Howard. Great presentation. Thank you, Howard. Thank Thanks you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dr. Conrad. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Thanks so Thanks much. Course, uh, appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you so much.